I think it would be fair to assume that on this channel we all have at least some idea that we are not the body, we're not this human experience, ultimately, that at the very least we share this experience with something else. And that something else, of course, is spirit. Now it's easy um, to speak about your spirit or your soul, but how many of us really know what that means? What is our spirit? What is our soul? What is our ego? What is our self? What are our personas? And how do they all intertwine? And which takes precedent over which at any given time? And can we swap that around at will? Can we have more jurisdiction and governance uh, over those things? So uh, in my book, I explain uh, in great detail what these differing notions of what it is to be a human being are. What is the spirit? What is the soul? They're different. Um, how does uh, ego um, line up with soul? Is there a difference? Are they the same thing? Is it just semantics? Um, in relation to the, the triune, you know, the, the Father, the Son and the, the Holy Spirit, what does that mean exactly? Uh, how can the Father and the Son be one? Uh, and ultimately pertain to spirit. So it gets very complex. But um, I thought I'd do a video um, probing a little bit to see uh, how you want to engage on this. I'm always speaking um, from a spirited facet. And, you know, it's the whole thing about being awoken. When we wake up, we know we've woken up. And if people say, oh, I don't know whether I'm awoken, you know, I've had people uh, say that to me in the past. Well, if you don't know, then you're not. It's like people saying, uh, I don't know whether I've got a PhD. Um, you'd know. Because of all the time and hard work it took to achieve it, you know. And your life changes because of that. And um, so when we awaken, of course, there are d differing degrees to uh, the state of our consciousness. And the awakening is really the beginning uh, of our cosmic growth, of the uh, awareness of awareness. And with all varying things, facets, um, uh, pertaining to a deeper level of awareness, Whenever we engage with those, then we increase our awareness. And so we can do this uh, via meditation, via uh, entheogens, via um, practicing, you know, to leave the body. Uh, astral projection, you know. Um, traumatic experiences. There's lots of ways in which we increase um, our awareness and our consciousness. But when we do that, then whenever we do anything, we're always mindful that there's two entities here. And um, so how do you deal with that? How much time do you spend uh, in the higher self perspective? How often do you get enveloped by the ego and have to remind yourself that you uh, are, in actual fact, primarily a, a, a spirit. Uh, and the spirit manifests the human form via consciousness. And so you really have to know who's boss. And so in my book, I speak about the master and his emissary, which is a term coined by um, uh, Dr. Uh, McGilchrist. Ian McGilchrist, and um, he speaks about the master being the right brain spirit and the emissary being the left brain ego.
and the house spirit always has to have mastery over the ego and um, when we do this then that's when we think and feel very very differently and when I'm out in the woods or when I was out in the woods yesterday and I'm speaking about feeling the presence of my uh, ancestors feeling um, the spirit of the land something tangible inside is um, mm, I don't know it's like throbbing this there's, there's, um, there's some activation and I just have to stop and absorb it and ponder it and you know enjoy it and be with it and then when you walk out of a certain realm you feel that dissipate and so we we have to contemplate uh, these powerful realms which we can go to um, you know sacred grounds and um, ancient burial grounds and where ley lines cross and all those sort of things so when we get into uh, that sort of thing we we most certainly uh, feel connected um, via our spirit to, to the natural world the spirit connects very very easily with the natural world uh, but in my estimation and experience uh, it doesn't seem to have too much of an interest with the matrixial world uh, and even with other human beings it's, it's a bizarre thing unless there is a spiritual connection but the NPCs um, which don't appear to be spirited well there's no connection there and so it's just like they are ships in the night and they just you know pass by um, and you don't feel anything from them and when you take um, entheogens like um, mushrooms you can feel this very very pronounced and as you're in the vicinity of all different people you know whether they have a spirit or not and the way I've described it in, in lots of my shroom experiences it's kind of like well there's lots of um, uh, entities here having an earth experience that are not human beings per se what is a human being uh, you know there's lots of speak of Nephilim of uh, Anunnaki uh, of Archons and um, you know other uh, sort of fallen angels and you know all this sort of stuff We've got a bit of an obstacle course here. You see these cracked willows, they are always crashing down. And when you look at them like this, with a uh, heavy snow or frost, that one's going to come crashing down. And so these trees have a propensity to lean a great deal. So they're very, very dangerous. And this is why many of the woods are being closed down uh, in moderate winds because of the danger and yet they've never ever closed this path and this if anything is really dangerous because this is the only place to walk directly under these huge trees and on a windy day you know they honestly within the past six months there's been half a dozen uh, which have you know laid over this path and the council eventually after a couple of months get around to clearing up clearing them up it's kind of bizarre it's kind of like you know are oh, they that busy that they can't come you know people have to chop their way through and, and, and make alternate routes around you know for months it's ridiculous but um, anyway so getting in touch then with, with our spirit and feeling the spirit and you can actually feel spirit uh, in plants, uh, in trees, in water, in the sky, in all natural things. You feel varying spirits and in differing trees you feel uh, spirits very, very pronounced. And when you've got certain woods given to certain varieties of trees, then they pertain a spirit the older the trees are the the, the stronger uh, the thicker the spirit when you've got uh, pine woods there isn't anything so deep and i've spoken about these experiences on shrooms in my book how they 
appear to want to absorb your sexual energy. As bizarre as that sounds, but I've had a very powerful experience whereby a, a, a wood lured me in um, to its center and then I, I felt it you know for 30 minutes having this sexual relationship with me and um, you know people think that's uh, insane but when you look into the nature of the trees and forests and folklore and the green man uh, you realize that you know trees they have a high level of consciousness and this is why the the wood the sinister wood is always portrayed in um, you know Walt Disney movies or the like there's always a wood grappling on you know uh, and a sinister aura woods often can appear to be very sinister they appear to have an ulterior motive all of their own but they do enjoy human energy they do enjoy your presence and um, they even recognize you when you go back again and they'll speak to you and they'll tell you oh hello again welcome it's been a long time and then when you leave they'll say oh going so soon do stay a little longer and they're speaking this sort of like you know mysterious gentlemanly sort of mm, magnanimous way you know very magnanimous particularly when you have the old oak uh, woods when you've got oaks 500 years old and they're huge and you know they've seen so much come and go and very seldom do they get uh, visited by human energy because they're in you know these forbidden regions and that's why I'm saying to you in this video I made yesterday that there are people on this planet that know about this and that's why they cordon off these places because there's something sacred there's something uh, going on uh, I don't know whether some sort of an agreement or um, some sort of respect or I don't know what level of communication they've got but I know that when we take uh, entheogens then we communicate very profoundly and many many people will tell you the same thing uh, in relation to trees um, it's a phenomenon uh, and so um, if you weren't spirited before you take uh, entheogens then that will be your introduction and you will have to ponder that for a good while and then you'll have to experience it again and again and again different environs and then you will start to realize that there's many many spirits all around um, unless it's just one spirit of Gaia and she comes in many many guises like consciousness consciousness comes in many guises and so it's difficult to um, to really you know get your head around but you, you feel all these different energies and um, you know you, you have a relationship with them and so this is why when I'm in these woods I just go into a space and I talk low and I'm whispering and I'm speaking about look at this tree and look at that moss and, and look how the water's just trickling down there and it's all magical it's all mystical because you're in that realm you're in a very powerful spiritual realm now unfortunately when I go to these woods they're like 20 miles away and um, uh, I, I only get to go there when my buddy comes over once a fortnight and because I only go once a fortnight when I get there I'm captivated and I have to bring the camera out and speak about how spirit is moving me and you know if I had the freedom to do it then I, I would do that for the whole duration and I would love to do this and uh, maybe in the not too distant future I'll get myself an electric bike uh, and then I'll do it and I'll make videos uh, whilst on varying substances and I'll tell you uh, all the varying uh, degrees of um, different energies and in my book uh, I write about um, the energy of the Amanita muscaria how when I was taking that 
uh, energy beings would come and live vicariously through my human form and it's like there is a spiritual realm like the Akasha or the astral plane and when you take certain um, portals mushrooms or entheogens of some description then that opens up doors to spirits and so people can encounter negative uh, I, I never have uh, I suppose it depends on you know your disposition and how evolved you are and different things like that but I've had a wolf um, come and share my body I've had a Viking I've had a very very primal man uh, then I've seen the, 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 the cosmos open up um, like a tear in, 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 in the, in the f firmament uh, and then a brilliant flash of bright light coming from God or an angel just stopped me in my tracks and stunned me and just something you never ever forget so there's all these things I'm speaking about and they're all in the book and many many more and so if any of you have any spiritual experiences or just any out of the ordinary experiences out of body experiences um, crazy mm, dreams or mm, astral sort of experiences there's, there's, there's lots of realms when we're unconscious that we can go to and whether you become lucid in your dreams or what sort of entities you meet all those sort of things I'm interested in that of course I am and so, uh, you know, if you feel free to share some of those um, with us, then please do. Uh, you know, I, um, I like to keep uh, the channel varied. Uh, it's a, it's um, a replication of what we are. There is many spirits here, there's many energies. And, um, you know, people get under the misconception that we only have like um, you know one soul or one spirit that's not my experience my experience is that there are many spirits that partake in our human experience and they come and go and some hang around longer than others but uh, that's how it's been for me and um, so when we um, give them energy when we get involved with them then of course they grow like an egregore um, and if those of you that are not sure about what an egregore is um, you do some YouTube search uh, look for a guy called Mark Stavish he'll speak to you about egregores and there's a book that you can buy um, it's very important to know about this it's the, it's the spiritual manifestation of energy into something that could be corporeal uh, and so I consider um, all these gods and angels and demons to be egregores. And so when I was spoken to by something that, you know, I was, you know, certain was Jesus and Jehovah, um, they were egregores. And so, you know, it sounds very convoluted and very contradictory when I am decrying uh, religions uh, but then proclaim that I've uh, encountered these things but what I'm saying is they're not what they are depicted uh, in the Bible uh, they are very different these things do exist uh, angels and demons I've met them all uh, they do exist in levels of consciousness uh, there are such things as spirits and they are probably egregores um, which have manifested out of um, um, the, the uh, consciousness of, of human beings being directed to um, you know uh, one variety of thing like if somebody speaks about the notion of angels and then starts to describe them the more people that uh, learn about them and know them then they enter into our collective consciousness and then ultimately through some sort of evolution they enter into our creative unconsciousness and they become archetypes and so if you really want to know about all this stuff then read about egregores read about archetypes and um, read about all different sorts of uh, ways in which we uh, experience these sort of things and um, if you ask me uh, for a book list I'll say well you don't need a list you just need one book and it's called Closer to God by Aaron Berry. 
and this book broaches most everything that you've you've probably ever thought of or will need to consider on your spiritual journey because it's 14 years of, of my life with all of the experiences that um, I've experienced and um, I've led a very um, exciting adventurous life with um, 300 you know entheogen experiences or uh, global travel and you know near-death experiences uh, I learned to you know astral project and uh, in deep meditation you experience incredible things so there's so much to learn and um, you know uh, it's difficult for me to I imagine why um, everybody that hears about this book isn't just rushing to buy it. I can't imagine what the reservations would be. Um, if it's money, that sounds silly. It sounds silly. Um, you know, if a person can't muster up 26 pounds or dollars, within the, like two weeks or a month by putting away a pound a day which they won't miss something like that if people were determined if they really felt that it was um, going to be important to them then they would do that or they'd ask a parent or a friend or somebody just buy me this book god damn it um but you know <laughs> People will still keep watching my videos, watching my videos, watching my videos. You'll be thinking that you can take the shortcut. You'll be thinking that you can be a lazy ass. And uh, I'm going to tell you everything in any case. I'm not. And nobody does on, on YouTube. They only ever scratch the surface. That's all we can ever do. You know, this book I wrote, it's got 250,000 words. And um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff that's been spoken about. And you need to speak about it in a thorough and structured way. And you need to have a lineage. One subject leads into another subject, into another subject. And you have to explain all these multiple facets of everything. And then you have to read, um, you know, copious amounts of other stuff. If you're ever going to get your heads around this, people. And so what I'm doing, of course, I'm calling upon 14 years experience with all these things. And thousands of esoteric books and you know hundreds of thousands of hours of watching esoteric videos uh, and you know you guys starting out uh, who haven't done this and don't have the time well, you've got your work cut out for you but what I can say is that my book that's gonna it's like a crash course and that's why I call it the world's first spiritual Bible because you will go back to different sectors in that book forever like people make reference to the Bible because as you grow and experience you go oh my god that's what Aaron was talking about let me go back and see what that means to me now maybe like you know uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius's meditations whereby if you're self-reflecting well you'll be self-reflecting now you entered you've entered into that realm of self-reflection you can't ever get out of it now and so whenever you do this self-reflecting then you'll need references and you'll need to return to stuff and that's why I return to books many times and I'm now on this book called reality and it's like my fourth read and you know it's a, it's a big book but it needs to be done people